So hello everyone, um, welcome to another Famous Places sketch. Got our reference here, which you can see is from Google Maps, Google Street View. This is Tootsie's Cafe in Nashville. So thank you for that recommendation. And please leave a comment below with a recommendation for someone you'd like me to sketch in the future as well. Um, also, um, I've recently released my line and mark making course so check out sketchloose.co.uk if you'd like to have a look of that um, but self-promotion aside let's have a little fun with sketching this scene now we can see because it's a street view we've got some cracking perspective going on so everything's sort of spiraling almost up here so it's like a three-point perspective but taken with a fisheye lens just to make everything even more confusing so we're going to have a bit of fun with that perspective for sure now this lovely pink building is the one we're after and it's kind of lavender pink isn't it but i've got a special pink that we're going to use um to got quinacridone coral a bright pink and we're going to make this building sort of stand out and see what we can do have a bit of fun with a, a ludicrously bright pink i'm going to start off with a 0.3 millimeter fine liner today i'm actually going to start on our sort of tootsies itself so this is going to be a lovely thin, well, I hope lovely, but certainly going to be a very thin um, continuous line sketch today. And why? Because I think continuous line sketches make amazing character, especially when you're, well, I think they make it all the time, but especially when you're dealing with some weird and wonky perspective and things. So we are going for a reasonably detailed continuous line drawing of Tootsies and just getting those major features in the walls, the interesting windows. We've got this kind of banner here, blacked out window and a doorway. And yet, like I said, reasonably detailed, not perfect, but reasonably detailed. And then from there, we're going to move around and sort of spiral out. We've got this uh, lovely um, awning, which we can already just accentuate the fisheye perspective of and we can bring down these sides and make everything a little bit wonky we've got these people as well so let's pop them in someone carrying a bag we can give them a little bag a little man facing us we can even get his hands in just with little cute little circles we've got something in the foreground haven't we oh, it's a uh, we look up it's a sort of street light so we can get that street light in as well with that kind of weird perspective and if we come up just loosen up our line a whole heap we can just find our way to the top bring down this wall and then we've got this really tall building i'm sure someone knows exactly what we're looking at here even in like my hometown and when I lived in London, I was terrible at knowing what I was looking at. I could recognise things and tell you where they were, but I wouldn't really know what I was looking at. Um, but if someone could tell me, that'd be amazing. If you know what these buildings are, let me know. Now, there's lots of shapes here, and because of the perspective, it's quite confusing trying to work out which is going where and, and how and what it means. But... All we need to do is find the shapes. So we've got rectangles, we've got another rectangle like this. And we've got totally wacky perspective, which is making everything really challenging to sort of have any sense of accuracy. But that's why we just get loose and loose on the outside. You get this idea of stacked up buildings and you can see there's a little traffic light hanging out here. Got another sort of traffic light here, which I'll just bring a of the buildings because it's a nice uh, rigid structure we know what it is we can see it it's dark it's in the foreground relative to the other buildings and we can just put it there and it kind of makes this whole thing make sense so we can do the same here we can make this traffic light a little bolder it just makes it make sense because the eye immediately recognizes the perspective the street because of these little details we can just find a few more people as well. We don't have to sketch the whole of a person in, remember. And with the walk perspective, I'm keeping the people the same size. So these people are the same size as here. But I think it will work because, you know, because it's got that 
funky fish I feel. The fish I feel comes from sort of spiralling it out at both ends. Now this tall building back here. So we can kind of just get its essential shapes in squares, rectangles, this kind of staircase feel at the back. Got this kind of middle section. And we've got a kind of rectangle I've missed off here, which joins up there. So now we've got this whole street connecting with this feel above us. And I've not really done the perspective on this, have I? I've, I've automatically gone straight up. I've, I've done it over here. So we've kind of given ourselves a vanishing point up there. But it probably should have been angled a bit more, but that's my uh, my head not quite being able to compute the weirdness of the perspective in this view we've got. And it doesn't really matter. It still looks interesting. It's not about producing a perfect replica by any means. Just going to introduce some interesting lines, little connections, little nice feels. And then we can get this pavement in as well. And that can come and accentuate the fisheye because it comes out at us. And just a few textural lines in there. Now what I want to do is have a go at getting a bit of tone in here, a bit of hatching, because we can see some really clear shadows. So there's really clear shadows coming down here. And the same on this side. And by doing this, so we've got this mad, mad perspective going on. But by then applying some clear shadows, it, it um, what's the word? It kind of orientates the, the eye so you know well, this must be this side, this must be this side. You, your eye, you don't have to compute it like that, you don't have to think it out loud, but your eye can just see it. So if we just get the, the relative tones of different sides of the buildings, we can find them all just carefully, just coming around. This is just some really simple, simple hatching, the same along here. We can just suddenly create this overlapping feeling. And all we're doing is just little bits of hatching. We can even hatch into the bits we've left blank and it just suggests something going on over there. Same in, in these doorways. We can hatch and then block out. We can just hatch this one, block out a little bit, suggest a doorway going in somewhere. We can get this hatching going underneath this awning, casting a lovely shadow. And it also makes these people stand out. We can get a little bit of shape on our funky little lights. And now we've got this sort of wacky wild uh, sort of uh, feel of everything going on. I'm just applying some little bits of hatching around our people just to ground them. No particular direction of the shadow. You can see the shadows should be going up here but more just uh, interested in connecting them to the ground with some texture, especially given how abstract we've been in, in how we've presented this scene. And that, I think, is enough of my pen. So next, of course, we're going to move on to adding a bit of colour. So as promised for the colour, we're actually going, I'm going to do two interesting colours. So we've got Quinacridone and Coral, and this is a really, very coral, very bright pink. Um, what you're imagining if you think of, sort of coral lipstick. I'm also going to use a bit of Potter's Pink. That's a more um, granular, earthy pink. I think the combination of the two in here, with a little bit spreading around as well, will be uh, a nice, not overpowering, but definite punchy combination. So, touch of these in my palette and we are ready to go. And we really won't need much because this is a, only an A5 bit of paper. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, we won't, we, you know, given it's only a small element of the paper as well, if you're not working out of pans, you really, really, for line and wash, do not need a huge amount of colour. You can save a huge amount of money doing it this way as well, of course. So we're going to start in this building and we're going to create a nice pool of water which can drip off the edge. I just want it to overlap a little bit as well. I'm going to start with our quinacridone coral, so a really bright and luscious pink as you can I'm sure already see and we'll see how that fades and faint, fades and becomes faint as we move around the rest of the image and then we can come back. 
So for these uh, these sky sky rises, uh, these tall buildings, I'm going to use a bit of fallow blue and just sort of scrub it in to get a little bit of texture. There's a little bit of indigo in the bottom of this palette as well, which provides a bit of extra tone. And then we can drop that into the shadows as well. So instantly we've got a bit of uh, connection through the whole of our sketch already. A little bit of moon glow just to drop into a few places. And I'm going to connect our little runaway streams because now they're going to join up to each other. Now in the background there's not a huge amount going on is there? So instead of trying to pretend there is, I'm going to bring the sky above it. Try and join our sky into our tower a little bit. I think the sky, we'll see what the sky does actually. We'll, so we've got options, we could bring the sky around the whole area. We could have it just pooling and bringing a sort of flow, again feeling that kind of funny perspective. Maybe to do that we just drop a bit of blue in here. So now we've we've accentuated the fisheye. And now what we've got, we've got um, two quite strong primary colours going on haven't we? So we've got this hot pink versus this, this cool blue and that's uh, it feels a bit unbalanced because we've just got these two uh, two colours which sit quite distant on the colour wheel but not opposite so they're not complementary they don't neutralize they create these purples and things but it creates a real tension in the image so we're going to have to start building a few other tones a few other bits in here's my potter's pink which is not going to help with that potter's pink is kind of you can kind of see it there like almost a, a muddy purpley pink um quite good for skin tones um in certain situations but what can we do well what we can do is apply a bit of a sort of more general warmth, something you know from the other side of the colour wheel. So we could take a primary yellow. Now this probably won't help that much, but it will move us in the right direction. So we're taking a primary yellow, now we've got three primary colours. And again, that, that's never quite satisfactory in how it feels. What we want to start doing is introducing secondary colours and things like that. Um, and there aren't that many of those in here, but what we can do is start introducing them anyway. So let's find a little bit of green for example. We can just use a bit of green down this street. And I don't know if it's just me because I, I want it to be true but do you feel that green instantly balances this whole image? And it's because we're no longer approaching three points of the colour wheel. We are sort of coming around and using a couple of colours next to each other. We've got the blue, the yellow, and the green, and it becomes much more harmonious. So what we've kind of got is blue, yellow, and green, and then opposite that red. If you would think it'd be useful, just let me know, and I can always do a little video on this about colour theory. And there will be in my course, uh, at the moment, the course I produce has got a lot of um, information about ink and pen and line work coming up in and hopefully two or three months time will be one specific about colour, in which case a whole workshop will be about um, colour theory as well. Anyway, back to this. So on this idea of keeping things uh, harmonious and working our way around the colour wheel a bit, I'm going to start introducing some warmer colours like, I've got a nice quinacridone gold, which should just make these reds and yellows feel a bit closer together. And it's all just playing with playing with ideas. So knowing a little bit of colour theory is great. Um, if you then, you know, can flexibly apply it. Um, you can also just do it by experimentation. You don't need to know the theory and you'll end up doing things very much intuitively. Just going to tone down a few areas. So a bit more moon glow, I think. Um, just to get those real darks. And there's some darks in these windows as well. And I'm looking at this thinking there's a risk soon of overdoing things. So when there's a risk of overdoing things, we need to take a little step back and decide what's the aim of anything else we add. Well, I think the last thing I'm going to do actually is just apply a bit more of our pink. I'm going to apply it direct to the page like this and then we can get a really intense blob or two. And we can use that same pink to blob onto our people. 
And now that pink isn't just in one area, and it's sort of signifying all the interest, all the human interest of the of the of the image. Then soften out some of those areas, but leave them like as definite punches of colour, but just make them a little, a little softer on the eye, a little softer on the page, but allowing things to pull and move. We've lost some of that fallow blue in, in all this playing around, so just touch a bit more fallow blue, we can get a little backwash of colour. The backwash is where you sort of put a colour in and it pushes other colours aside. And we've just introduced that in a few places. And I think that's probably my colours done. What we need to do now, let this dry and just see if we need to elevate anything or bring in a little bit more pen work to bring it back together. And um, before I do that, I'm just going to add my signature because even, even now I'd be happy to call this a finished little sort of bright, interesting, colourful uh, sketch. So we are back and we are dry. And now I will forgive you if you were looking at this before and thinking, oh my God, what's he doing? That is way too bright, way too bold. But it just, just goes to show, look how much this has faded and mellowed. Um, and that's with the thing with watercolours, you just got to have a little bit of faith. You've got to know your colours and understand that, with, especially if you're adding them with lots of water, things are going to just, it's going to chill out and you can afford to be a little bit wild because things are going to become okay in the end. With that said, there's also some bright, bold colours going on, which are sort of just covering up some of the shapes you want. So I'm going to come back with my same fine liner and we're just going to find some of those shapes again. Being careful not to be too bold. I think this line's on the edge of being too bold, but I'll just detract, uh, not detract from it, uh, distract from it by making some of the contrasted areas a bit darker. And then it kind of pushes away from from that being too noticeable. We could also even lift up this building. And now we've detracted or distracted again, sorry, a little bit more from it. We could fill in the bottom of this building as well. We left that unfinished. We can just sort of find the bottom and find a bit of texture in those shapes. These windows we can just gently refine and re-emphasize, especially the sort of shadowed edges of them. And this, we can make it clearer that it's an awning by adding a bit of sort of writing on top, which is, you know, what's actually happening in the image. So, so why not? Then as we move away, we can decide, well, maybe we want to add a little bit of window here. This man's been lost because I didn't add pink to him, so we'll reinvigorate him. We'll find bold vertical lines where the shadows come. And it just, again, with all this murky shadow, all this hatching, bold vertical lines just refine those shadows and shapes. We can come up the top here, we can find this again. And perhaps we even want to just suggest some windows on this to make it clear that this is a, a distant building, not just an oddly shaped building. Just a few little window suggestions. And almost there, really. You don't want to do too much at this stage. And this is all about this sort of mad colour and this deep pink that we've added. So if we just find a couple more lines to bring a bit of shape into this road, then I'm definitely going to call it done. Because otherwise we're going to, we're definitely going to do too much. This is already a mad, colourful sketch. We knew it was going to be from the moment I mentioned quinacridone coral. Um, so let's just pop a little... Python, I've already signed it. Tootsies in Nashville. I can't I can't write today. Um and that is my sketch done. So look, thank you for this suggestion. A really interesting challenge, especially such a, a quirky building in such an interesting environment. Um and with that interesting colour which we've not copied, but taken inspiration from. Let me know what you think. Is this uh, too mad and completely 
agree with people if they think it is but it also is it just a lot of fun and if we just played a lot again uh, you know i'll agree with you if you think it's just a lot of fun so let me know what you think um and as i said at the beginning do let me know if there are other places you'd like me to sketch in the future Look, here's a paper that needs to touch.